Two, one, let's start. All right. Well, we're here with, with um, uh, our county historian, Ernie Johns. Ernie sadly fell and broke his hip, what, last weekend. And um, we got this road dedication being um, done tomorrow, November 21st, 2015, at 11 o'clock. And Ernie uh, obviously can't make it because he's here at um, Hickory Woods Nursing Home over here on the Davidson County, uh, Rover County line in, in um, Laverne, you know. But we brought the sign over here to surprise him. He's um, he's been our county historian for a number of years, and, and with me I've got our Smyrna historian Marty Luffman that knows a lot about Smyrna history, history of the Jefferson community, and, and Jefferson Pike. And um, uh, our Senator Bill Ketron's on his way. He got tra uh, tied up in a meeting. He's on his way, and uh, we kind of pulled off a little surprise for Ernie here. Were you surprised, Ernie? Were you surprised? Well. Very much. What um, the 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 history of that? You want to start off a little bit of the history of the Jefferson community. Uh, Jefferson community started a long time ago. Mm -hmm. it started with Robert Weekly coming in that, in the area. Robert Weekly. Robert Weekly got yeah. a land grant there. Yep. And now, when he got that land grant, wasn't that part of North Carolina? I believe it was. The area that you're currently in, when he came here, he was a North Carolina resident. Yes. And he got the land grant, as I understand it, from the King of England and the Governor of North Carolina. Yeah, I've heard you mention that on on the radio with us a couple of times, you know. And then um, then from what I understand, he, he brought his wife who was uh, her last name, her maiden name was Locke, L-O-C-K-E, and um, he was a co-founder of Old Jefferson, is that correct? I think that's right. She he ended up, he ended, I don't know where he lived there or not, he ended up living in Nashville. That's my understanding that he built the home that you currently have, is that correct? Uh, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. He built it in the uh, late 1700s, and and then um, as Old Jefferson grew, it it was once uh, the county seat or the capital. County seat. County seat. Okay, and then they moved it from Old Jefferson to Murfreesboro, and from Murfreesboro to Nashville. Nashville. Well, that's a little confusing. Uh, it's don't matter. My understanding is that Jefferson only became a became a capital for one day. That's what yeah, I've always heard. But it did give us that one day hmm. of fame. So anyhow, uh, the man that built your home that you grew up in, um, he created a place called Lockland, a, a mansion in East Nashville and started his own city. Now he named his mansion Lockland because that was his wife's maiden name. So he did it in honor of her. That was days before my time, kind of. Well, I'm a little bit. Interested in. Well, the home you're so so you're saying. See, I didn't know this. You're telling me that the the what we're referring to is the King's John home, your mother's home, Liberty Hill that y'all may call it. Your mom, I think, referred to as that. You're saying that that weekly man built that home. That's my understanding. All right, I didn't I didn't know that. Okay. Is yeah. that correct? I mean, I, I may be wrong, but I was uh, under the yeah, impression. You, you, you're right. Well, Ernie is, had shared with me years ago, as long as with, with Tom Sage had told me that the Trail of Tears come down through there in front of that home. Yes. And what we're talking about is old Jefferson Pike in Smyrna off of yeah. uh, State Route 266. Route 102. Save it because of the Trail of Tears. Why, why is that important to you? It's important to them because the Trail of Tears is one of the few buildings still in yeah, it's still standing, it's in the trail tiers. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. correct. Actually, my understanding is it's like the only one still standing that was there during the trail of tiers. The historical significance of your home is beyond comprehension. We need to actually make that as a like a the Sam Davis home. Make make it a uh, historical landmark. That's what I agree with. You. I agree with you there. 
we need to be saved for that reason. Yeah, the, the but it's just uh, some people think, well, we've got the Sam Davis home. We don't need another house like that. Has anyone said that? Do you, have you felt that someone? Have you heard anybody say that though? No. Yeah, I've never heard that. I mean, I know that history may not mean a lot to a lot of folks. It means obviously it means a lot to, to us. Um, I'd seen sadly about two weeks ago uh, a house in Eagleville, Annabellum home burnt down, and we're losing. I've seen the other house over there on Amoyville Road. Mis remember, is it Mr. Sharp? I knew Mr. Sharp um, over there in the by Seminary Road. He was uh, in the Gideons with me, and he's passed away. He was Bob Spivey's Sunday school teacher over at the Methodist Church, and um. They just demolished that home, um, I think, uh, last month. You hadn't, hadn't seen that? Yeah, they I tore it down. It was even demolished. Yeah, they tore it down. Yes, sir, it's gone. And, um, uh, you know, and the developer, you know, you know, he, he's just, I mean, he, he, he's got to make his numbers work and the lot costs work. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to preserve those things because a lot of folks don't have much, much rich. And it's hard to get the numbers to work, too, to get people to donate or to get folks um Involved. Well, I was a developer and a builder all my life. That's what I've done. Yes, sir. Two one, two one house, particularly in Smyrna. It's not significant. It wasn't anything, anything, or anything great happened, anything like that. But one of the significant things about the man that built your house, Mr. Week, Colonel Weekly, um, he was asked to negotiate a treaty with the Chickasaw. So he he not only had their com he he created a comfort zone with the Indians, and so when the Trail of Tears happened, that was a difficult thing for him to accept because he was their friends and the Chickasaw above all, they they were a significant businessmen. They controlled the Columbia Duck River area. Well, look at here. Huh. Right number, yeah, boy. How you doing, sir? Good to see you. I'm going to let you join it, and you go say Ernie. hello. Ernie. I'm all right, okay. buddy. Good to see you. I, I, feel, I feel real distinguished having you uh, and in your company. Well, thank you. So you got No Shave November going on? And I don't just, know. Just relaxed and taking it easy, huh? Get out of here. Are you trying to grow bright gray hair? You want you want to be just like me when you grow up, don't you? Trying to look like you. Yeah, exactly. I can tell that. Exactly, but I'm not sure it's going to come back. It's it's coming back a little bit. My mustache yeah. came back, but uh, the rest of the no, it's coming the, back. It looks pretty good. The rest, behind. rest of the hair on my body is not coming back. I, I never had any hair on my body, yeah. so it's not that big not a deal. Bad, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. You know, little, I, little I shave is, once every three days. Get a little manscaping mm -hmm. going on. <laughs> We were having a really interesting conversation with Ernie here about his home place uh -huh. on Jefferson Pike being built by Colonel Weekly in the late 1700s. Right. And Colonel Weekly was very prominent uh, as far as helping establish Smyrna and, sure. and Old Jefferson. And that's where we Weekly, were. When Weekly Lane. Mm hmm. Named after uh, Mr. Weekly. How you, so you, you fell and hurt yourself? Yeah, I broke his hip. Oh, man. I didn't really break it, I cracked it. Well, yeah. that's okay. But that's Have they okay. done surgery? No. Not going to? I hope they don't. They're not going to do it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to stay away from you forever. Yeah. But, uh, but we were talking about the significance of keeping that home yeah, and King, making it a historical King monument. Yeah. King John's home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we did keep. Um, we did make, a, a, I'll put it on the National Register, Jesse James's home on Fatherland Street, which is like two streets over from Lachlan, you know. Yeah. So. Bill, you want to you want to kind of talk about what you what you're doing to on the home? Uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, we we passed a bill. Uh, Steve uh, McDaniel. And myself, Representative Steve McDaniel, and he's from down in West Tennessee. And he's a big Civil War reenactor, big Civil War reenactor, and and uh, uh, we passed a bill that will allow us to go uh, taxes that that go for property. I'm not sure how exactly it works, but for uh, <coughs> all property taxes, the state gets us a very small percentage. But you do that. 
cumulative over the whole state and it amounts up to a whole, whole lot of money so we there's a lot of money in that and nobody's tapped it because everybody never sees it okay it's not part of the budget or anything else and the money just keeps funneling in there so we're going to the the uh, language that's in the current code says that it can be used to uh, for wetlands it can be used for expansion of parks it can be used for expansion of greenways and trailways and historical places so that's what my attempt is to go in and try to get at least 150,000 out to pay Frank Frank said he'd sell it to us for 150 okay and then I have a verbal commitment from the uh, sons of the American or sons of the Confederacy, SCV down in down in Elm Springs in Columbia, uh, that they will come in because the state really doesn't like to have a piece of historical property and then take the perpetual maintenance. You know that's what has to be budgeted every year to, for the upkeep. Uh, the uh, sons of the of the um, Confederate veterans they have a lot of deep pockets. And a lot of extra money and and I think it would be perfect for them to come over take it over rehabilitate the facility turn it into a, um, uh, a um, uh, tourist type opportunity you know to increase tourism in Smyrna because it's so close to to Sam Davis home you know when people get off they can see that and then come see this at the same time so that's I yeah. think it would be a good opportunity for Smyrna yeah I think so we talked about the Trail of Tears earlier coming through there. Coming through there and yeah. having camped there and then the number of battles that uh, that took place. I think the, I think there were like 16 supply wagons that were burned mm -hmm. at yeah. one time uh, during the... The Wheeler's Raid around yeah, the Road's Raid. Yeah, yeah, they were coming coming to Murfreesboro. Mm -hmm. Well, supplies. it was a, a major port of entry too. We had actually steamboats who would come up the Stones River right. and dock. We had piers right over there where old Jefferson is. The piers that would wharfs that would go out into the water. I don't believe those piers ever functioned very much though. I wondered how they would navigate that. Yeah, the water, water, wasn't, water wasn't deep enough. Only you? during the winter, right? Well, they built one up there. They built a steamboat. Well, they'd float, they'd float, what would you call like barges back then? It would be the flat bottom. Flat bottom boats. Flat bottoms. Down. Yeah, that's all they had. You could use it in the wintertime. That's, in the summertime yeah. it was yeah, you'd have to get down the wall. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a there's the remains of one dock or pier or wharf or whatever you want to call it still left over there. You can see where the posts are coming up out of the water where the mm. where you would go out to the boat and you know, meet the boat and tie up. Be interesting. Yeah. So the significance of that area where your house is and your your mom lived and your dad lived and everything is is it's uh, overwhelming when Very you look at the big picture of mm -hmm. everything that transpired from the 1700s when the weekly Colonel Weekly got involved. Right. Well, how how'd the name Liberty Hill come about, Ernie? Liberty Hill came about because one of my grandmothers, I believe one of my great grandmothers, named it that because of the place they had over in North Carolina was named Liberty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Up close to Hillsborough, North Carolina. A lot of activity up there in Hillsborough, North Carolina. That's where a lot of your revolutionary soldiers were. Yeah. Uh, General William Francis Nash actually lived in Hillsborough, North Carolina. Uh -huh. It's very significant. Well, so many of them came here. I mean, mm -hmm. Murphy, Colonel Murphy, and Granny and, uh, White. Yeah. She uh, lived there. The the property that I live on, uh, Mr. Blanton, he was just a, a corporal in the revolution, but he got the grant. The land grant to come and settle, right? And so his the foundation, his house is in the backyard. You know, of course we're back up to the battlefield, and they used his house during the Civil War as a hospital. He had, he had passed away like ten years before, but his wife and daughter, Mr. Blanton's wife and daughter, lived in the house. And then, of course, Wilkinson Pike was the main battle line. Yeah, right. You know, for uh, as the, the the Confederate forces came from over where. Now let's lend them all. Used to be Shovel Highway and came this way, you know, back towards the railroad tracks. Right, right. Your brother, Frank, when he lived over where they created Lee Victory Parkway Interchange right here, he had a house next door to uh, Frank Crossland. My understanding was there was a fort there 
at one time. That's where the fort going into Murfreesboro was maintained. Right. They took the fort down and he built his home on the foundation oh, really? of the fort. Is that correct? That's, That's my right. understanding. That's right. I had heard that. I hated to see, well. him, see him build a house up in the fort. Yeah. But I didn't take any defense against it. Frank yeah. and I were good friends. Very good friends. Yep. Ernie, people always ask me, that name your you and Frank are brothers, and then you've got Tom that's your your brother. Name, can you name your brothers and, and Tom your and John and Mary and Martha. Okay, and then you name some of your cousins. I got name you. your favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. <my. laughs> <laughs> name some because people are always asking me if you and Paul and Steve are brothers and y'all are cousins. Uh, cousins. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is. Now, the well, home that uh, you, Frank built uh, over there on Jefferson, there was an antebellum mansion there at one time. There was a house there. Uh, no, the, the Holloway's occupied. I wouldn't go to a mansion. I remember it being two-story with columns. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've got yeah. something else in mind. Nah, you uh, think about a house across the road. Okay. Long to ask me if Yes, because I think owned that property. The All Junior's right. own. Who was that? Espy. Espy? Okay. That would would you have considered that one an antebellum mansion or was that just a big home? That was a that was a home bigger than big as any of them. It was. It was it was a very large home. Mm -hmm. But uh, So the significance of that road it's probably got more than just about any in Rutherford County. Oh yeah. When you yeah. think about yeah. the, the historical aspects of it, the, all the major homes that was there, and the Trail of Tears, and the Indians coming down through there, and, and Colonel Weekly's involvement in and our first county seat, right, Jefferson. Right. What, what year was that? Seventeen thirty-two. Was it that early? I thought it was like more. It was like seventeen, like eighteen o two, eighteen ten, somewhere in there. It was just right before that, right? Because then the county became the, the, the capital for a while, Rough County became capital. Two years. We, the capital was in Murfreesboro for two years, state capital. You know where it is? You know where the boat plant on Old National Highway is? Yeah. That's, it was built on the foundation of the capital, right? Are you? No. By Scott Harbor? No, it was, my, it was my understanding that it was where... Uh, where is that now? Uh, Bank of America. There was some buildings right in there. Oh, okay. In downtown Murfreesboro. In downtown Murfreesboro. Yeah, because I, when I was in, in Boy Scouts, um, Whitney Stegall called us and told us that there was, um, um, they were getting ready to start dismantling that because it was the, the old Commerce Union Bank is getting okay. ready to come in there and build it, and he said, and a lot of the wood inside of that is all walnut, and so he called Dad because uh, we all went to church together the First Methodist and he said uh, he said bring your Boy Scout troop down here and he said go in there and get some of that salvaged wood that walnut mm -hmm. and so we all went and got a piece of walnut and we carved our neckerchief slides out of it because it came from the That's state. That's good. Came from the state really? capital. Well I had got my information from Haynes Baltimore. You remember him? I remember Haynes. That was uh, that was uh, I remember Haynes. I remember Haynes. Yeah that was. Um, He's a good fellow. Oh, I love the man to death. His, yeah, uh, awesome guy. His son-in-law is one that, uh, oh, what was his name? Um, took his place as re register of deeds. Um, remember, he, they kicked him out of office. Yeah. Filed a lawsuit I against him. Yeah. I remember something remember about the story. I dig. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's leave his name out right now, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, Ernie. Um, one thing I had—he was up on the radio with me years ago, and um, and you shared a guy, you shared a story with me about a guy, a black guy that grew up on y'all's farm. What was that guy's name? You remember? And you had a lot of a lot of respect for him. You, you remember that? You told Mews. Me? What was his name? Jimmy D. Mews. How do you spell the last name? M U S E. M U S E. Mews. Okay. I used to go see him at times. Yeah. Went to see his wife after he died. So he grew up on y'all's farm then? Yes. Okay. He's, he was, his father said that they were from 
Leanna. I found them in Leanna, in Leanna, in the 1870 census records. Oh, you looked up his, his back then. But I remember you, you were telling me years ago like that a lot of the blacks wouldn't come in, like to the dinner table and your mom always treated them like family. My mother always, they, I remember they'd come up to the house in the morning after breakfast and get the breakfast there. And they'd get breakfast with the family right there. But they wouldn't sit at the main table. They'd sit off at the outer side. A little side table. Maybe that was disrespectful of a family of black queer folks. No, they were completely black. Though. I remember you telling me you it was like a, I think you mentioned him like he was like an uncle or somebody that you really had a lot of admiration for. Well, yeah. now what was the area that you had a nickname for the area you lived in? Was it C Tick or Tick Seed or Small uh, Tick, Big Tick? He took is a car there in this area off sort of to the west of us, north of us. Oh really? To the west of you, that'd be that subdivision across the street. Um oh what's that? Jefferson. What's that called? Jefferson Springs, that was called across across the street from, from the house there? A little further than a mile or two further. Okay. Uh, how did he get his name? I had heard People named it. It's like somebody didn't just talk and they said, well, he's, he's from over there. See, Dick, that's the way I was saying it. He's, he's from over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, where was the old racetrack? There was an old horse racetrack. It was down in, down in just below Ohio. In a, bottom, in a big in bottom, co engineer's bottom now. You're talking about behind, where, to the right of Frank's, your brother Frank's house? Mm -hmm. Is that where it was at? Okay. At the best of my knowledge. Which will be between, behind Gillsville, Gills Ace Hardware, and Frank's house. Yes. That was an old But I can't. Did you ever see any remnants of that? Because I uh, did. I was talking to Gilbert the other day, and he'd been over there, and he said he's never found anything. He was asking me where it was at. So I think it was right where you're describing it. Well, horse yeah. racing in the 1800s was very prominent. There was probably in the Middle Tennessee area at least 100 racetracks where the fairgrounds is on 231. Oh yeah. They had a racetrack yeah. there. And then um, in Nashville. I they remember were, seeing the remnants when I was young. Yeah. You yeah. can see the outline of yeah. the track. Yeah, exactly. But You're talking about over by the, the Dodge store where the juvenile detention no. facility yeah. is. Back behind the behind the juvenile detention yeah. but a little bit further down that's where the remnants used to okay. be. Okay. Yeah. You know, and they're behind Shoney's. I don't remember that. He, even <laughs> Jesse and Frank James owned a racetrack on the Cumberland River over there. Mm -hmm. uh, they had their own, it was called the Blood Sport. And they had their own racetrack. There's a brick place, they make bricks there now. Mm. I can't think of the name of the company, but um, it's a brick manufacturing. I know what you're talking about. You do? Yeah, and there used yeah, to be a restaurant yeah, called sure. The Wharf or something like mm -hmm. that? Yeah. That's where the, the racetrack was. The mm -hmm. That's where the, yeah, that's where the racetrack was. So racetracks were not uncommon. It was between racetracks and preachers and schools, we were in overkill. Because yeah. if you were a teacher, you always had a job. You always had an income. If you were a preacher, you were always going to get fed somewhere. It's sort of like this this place here. This place here is a pretty nice place to be. It's a beautiful care of. facility. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is nice. Yeah. You, you you know where we're sitting? There used to be an antebellum, or what I call an antebellum. You call it a large house, but it was a very large antebellum-looking mm -hmm. home sitting right here. Yeah, I remember that. And the developer bulldozed it down to build the mm -hmm. subdivision. And well, wasn't it wasn't it right wasn't up this up this road right here? I remember it being up the road. You talking about when the truck stop used to be here? The old truck stop. Was yeah, right they here. they call it back up the hill here. They call, they, uh, they call it the. Um, I can't tell you because I didn't. They brought me down there one night, and I don't know exactly where I am. And then the club across the street, that's something you'd probably. Oh, probably yeah. I mean, to. we. Yeah. <laughs> what was the club across the street over here? It, was, it was a rock castle rock type. Castle. Uh, castle. Yeah, yeah. They, and then when that guy was murdered there or killed or whatever, yeah. they pretty much just. That's where everybody turned to go to Four Corner. Right. Yeah. You're all thinking about the place to go. 
place to go was across the road. Ma at uh, Ma's place over there. Where was that at? Um, I don't know what her name was. She had a place over there that she ran with a bunch of gals. Oh, that was right up here on the left, right before you get to Murfreesboro Road. It was a large pink home, and she had about a half a dozen pink cottages. Yeah, what are you looking at me yeah. like that for? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what's twinkling exactly. in your eye. <laughs> hey, I got excited Where thinking about that. It was right up here on the left. On okay, the left. when you <laughs> when Mur when um, I twenty four stopped at Old Hickory Boulevard yeah, right to get to Murfreesboro, you had to get on Old Hickory and come through Laverne. Yeah, that's correct. And Laverne was like a hot spot then. We oh, had a yeah. Stuckies with campgrounds and yeah. Texaco stations, and of course we had the Pink Palace up here. Yeah, with Stuckies turned into Perks. Fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What's that? That turned into Perks fireworks up here. Yeah, that was the Stuckies. Yeah. I didn't like the design that. of the building. All the Stuckies were. I didn't same. know that. Yeah, Stuckies. Okay, you just talking yeah. some well, of them. Last in business. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it would last forever. Yeah. And then we had like two or three motels going down through mm -hmm. here till you get to Smyrna, and um, because. It was a very populated, heavily traveled road back in the day. I, 41, what, went from Chicago to Florida maybe? Is that well, right? yeah, that's the way that um, uh, Al Capone used to travel from Chicago and he'd always stop in Murfreesboro yeah. on his way to, to Florida. Right. Um, that's where Murfreesboro got its name was Little Chicago because there was prostitutes and cocaine all down on Lytle Street. Well, a lot of Yeah. Well. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, of that going all on there. All the gangsters stopped in Murfreesboro. I might edit some of this video. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, Dr. Homer uh, Pitters wanted, uh, I, I never forgot that. I just thought that was so interesting because the churches came in and, and kicked them out. And it was part of Murfreesboro's history of, of cleaning up, mainly. Yeah. Uh, know, I remember and, there was some. Churches some took over. Church of Christ could, and the Baptist, I mean, it was, yeah. it was, it was huge. Well, that, I know there were some hotels that was bulldozed down real quick, and there were right. some that was burned down real fast. Right. Because they were a haven yeah. for um, corruption. And Al Capone would stop at that place, and I think the restaurant's still open up in Mont Eagle. He would stop up there and eat. Yeah, well. Smokehouse. Oh, really? Yeah, Smokehouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he stopped up there quite frequently. Wonder if he was full my time. <laughs> mine too, but uh, I just remember Dr. Dr. Uh, Pitter, you know, was an empty shoe. He was vice president. Dr. Pitter was a good fellow. Uh, he knew an awful lot. Oh, he was, was he so smart? Who was before you were like historian Ralph County? Who was kind of your predecessor? Who was before? Dr. Petter was a county Pitter. historian for a period of time, and I don't know. There was probably a gap in there. I don't know before Ernie became. Where did Walter Hoover mm -hmm. come in? Walter Hoover never was a county historian. He had more about some detail about Smyrna more. Now tell us a little bit about you being on the county commission, Ernie. I was on it for eight years. Did you enjoy it? You got elected. Very much. You got elected the same time I did in 1990. And I regretted it. I got off. Did you really? Yeah. But it was time. I. It was taking too too much of a time. Yeah. It was. You were still building then. Still building some. It was taking my time. Away custom from homes. Me. And the last one of the last things I did up there was get the county, com I, I made a motion to raise the county, com county commissioner's hey. rates yeah. for double. Yeah, yeah. per diem. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody else raised it triple. I think it's McAdoo. McAdoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see McAdoo that. <laughs> <laughs> McAdoo, McAdoo was a very unusual character. Wow, he was up there before y'all were, weren't he? Wasn't he? Oh McAdoo. yeah, yeah. McAdoo been on there for a long time. He been on there yeah. since when they first started. Yeah, yeah. Wow, he was, he was back there with yeah. Rucker Rakes and. I tell you uh, what, McAdoo's always he was always fair to me when I was on there. Yeah, he's, oh, he's level headed and. I'll call him a conservative. You know what I mean. Oh, I, mean I, I would say he voted that way. Fiscal conservative. Yeah, yeah he you know? voted that way. Um, I, I want to share a story. Uh, I know. I think I've shared this with Ernie and, and y'all. Um, but when before I was going to run for county commission, it was probably t maybe 2000, 2001, and I asked Sally Walls. I'll stand behind between that door. Thank you. But I had a one round. I had asked. Um, uh, there you go. But I had asked uh, Sally Walls. I said uh, in Smyrna. I said, 
What about that Mr. Ernie Johns? And he and I said, what do you think about it? And I always seen you speak up on issues. And she says, he's, he's his own man. You ain't ever going to buy him. He ain't no one's <laughs> yes man. And I always liked it. And I called you up the next day. We met at Hardy's. You remember that? I don't remember. Remember at Hardy's? You don't remember that? Smart? Yeah, we hung out there at Hardy's, had some coffee for a while. Yeah. Sometimes I found a county commission, you run into something you have to run ahead on into. That's right. And you don't know what to do, you go vote. Mm hmm. Sometimes you wait until the last minute to vote. Yeah. But it's well, Colonel Wakely always inter introduced himself as a politician. He would say, I'm a Republican Democrat. <laughs> and, and that's what he registered himself as. But what now? Who was that? Who was that? Who was that? You Colonel Weekly. Colonel Weekly. Mm -hmm. A Republican Democrat. <coughs> That's why he's listed. He's okay. a Republican Democrat. That's a story I never heard. Yeah, I hadn't heard that either. Yeah. Uh, Wikipedia. There's a lot of stuff in there about him. But there's um, o over on East Nashville on Russell Street, um, there's a, a marker dedicated to his home and his efforts in uh, creating his own town. I think it was called Edgefield, maybe, over mm -hmm. there. Yeah, there at Edgefield. Was Edgefield. Edgefield. Okay, Edgefield. I believe that's the town he created for himself, and then Metro Nashville, of course, abs absorbed, absorbed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they had uh, five points right down from where his yeah, little community was, yeah. and it was a very violent uh, area at the time. And, you know, it's where you had several cities coming in and people coming into Nashville would mm -hmm. use, you know, the different routes coming in. And, and yeah, there was a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of bigotry back in there, not necessarily against blacks and whites or anything like that, but just you had the Irish here That's cool. uh, that uh, they came in and took over what they called Black Bottom of Nashville, which was Fifth Avenue, Fourth Avenue, and nobody wanted to live there. You, you had black people living there and they came in and run them out and took the shanties and Jews made businesses out of them, and you know there's a lot of activity over there sure. that uh, wasn't necessarily all that good, and it, you know uh, Nashville deteriorated even further, you know back in the 70s when we had nothing but prostitutes and down on the down lower on Broad. Broad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's have, where Black Bottoms was. Yeah, it didn't have a good reputation, Lower Broad, back mm -hmm. during the well, late 60s. Well, now, what's so. interesting is that on Fourth Avenue, there's one saloon left. They're, that's still an active saloon mm -hmm. from the 1800s, uh, and I don't know if many people know that. that? It, it's on um, Fourth. Fourth Avenue, and for the like me, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's still an open, running saloon. Got the original doors on it and everything. Oh, wow! Well, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I do. Um, and there's some. It's um, right across from Bridgestone, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's okay. two old houses right there. Uh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. the two old houses right across the bridge. And it's a park fairly close, a right. sitting area mm -hmm. park type thing, yeah. There's so much interesting stuff about that that connects, actually connects to your home, your mm -hmm. road, your street. Well, Weekly Lane, you know, let, let, tell us a little about Weekly Lane, about, about Weekly Lane itself going out to Castle Pike and, and where it got its name at then. Well, it's Colonel Weekly, you mm -hmm. know. That's so there's... He never lived on that road. Or <coughs> okay. Just right. recognized him. Oh, okay. Kind of like okay. Ernie Johns Highway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Has the trouble with the whole house. It was occupied by the Jones family. After the last, well, when Frank Jr. got it. But it's so close to the Sam Davis home. That everybody thinks it's not. It's, it's, why I want to save it? Mm -hmm. Why you want to save an old, old house? Well, in my, in my, in looking to see, you know, well, it's in two miles or less of the other house. Mm -hmm. But the Sam Davis home occupies something. One, one, one particular niche, and that's, mm -hmm. and they get on a road right now to do something with old house. Yeah. They've got a group that met last night it's more that's supposed to be doing something about, mm -hmm. about getting the money up to buy it. Good. 
Well, tomorrow we're going to be out there at Gillsville. I know you can't make it. Senator Kitchener's going to speak. Marty's going to speak. Greg Tucker, our county historian now, he's going to be out there. He was going to try to make it today. He couldn't. He couldn't attend. Um, and uh, Toby Francis is going to be out there too. So we're going to have a good. We're going to have a good crowd tomorrow and um, uh, out there for you, Ernie. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and we're going to also talk. I got uh, Pat. Is it Pat Clements, Ernie? Mr. Pat Clemens, yeah, I think he's going to speak about about the importance of that old home, um, and uh, thank you, ma'am, um, and the importance of saving that old home. Um, so, what this video will probably be do done is to also help let other folks know uh, what your what what your wishes are too, what you'd like to see done. You know, I've got mixed wishes. I know I remember the old house mm -hmm. with a good. Good, very good wishes. Because I grew up there. Yeah. Well, I think the probably the most significant is the fact hello, that hello. people sit in the sit in the front yard and on the porch watching the Indians being relocated mm -hmm. wow. to Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Does. So. Well, what I what I like to do is it, it, I'll go ahead and wrap up. You talk about real quick the importance of the home. The importance of the home and then then you and then we'll close out with him yeah. talking about the importance of that home is that is that cool i'll start mm -hmm. and you start okay and then we'll we'll kind of make it a few minutes is that okay all right hang on just a second to get for a little bit where i finish up to you thank you sir see you. thank you all right mike will you yeah well uh we're going to wrap up and just want to talk about the importance of uh not only recognizing uh, ernie johns and his um, service to this county and the history and his love of history naming Ernie Johns um, uh, Highway tomorrow, um, which is uh, November 21st, um, 11 o'clock we're doing this, 2015. But I want to just mention how important it is to, this this, this home is important to, to Ernie, important to, to Marty and Senator Kitchen, and um, why it's important to the, to the rest of y'all. I think the significance is, is the fact that the home was probably one of the original homes here. It's one of the last homes standing that actually witnessed the Trail of Tears. It was built by one of the founders, uh, Colonel Robert Weekly, who came here and, and helped found the uh, old Jefferson City or a community or town, and, and then went to Nashville and, and uh, created um, Lachlan, East Nashville. So I think the significance of that home far outweighs any of the detrimental things that anybody could say about it. Yeah, <clears throat> first let me just say it's an honor and a pleasure to be um, here with you, Arnie. Uh, you and I served uh, for eight years on the county commission together, and I respect you so much not only uh, for um, everything you've done for the community in Smyrna and Rutherford County over the years, being our county historian, um, but uh, um, what you represent for that area of Smyrna and it's important to me to try to help save this home the the King John John's home because it is one of the most historically significant homes uh, available to us that's not already been taken in and, and turned into some type of museum or something else and and uh, if we can make an attempt to try to salvage that before it's torn down or just collapses because of of weather and deterioration and everything else, I think that uh, we need to try to save that because uh, if we don't save our history, we forget where we come from. Amen. Uh, and it, it is so important that uh, we, we try to preserve that history so other generations can do that. And you've always been, um, uh, uh, it's been part of your, your life is, is preserving that history and sharing it. I remember the three books that you got published um, on Rutherford County history, and I, I bought those from you when you were the county historian. It's uh, so it's a, a and indeed an honor and a pleasure uh, to be here with you, Arnie, and and for the dedication of the road. You know, just to to let people know that you've played an important part in this community by naming the the highway after you. Well, I'm surprised. It's what a surprise the whole thing happening. I know you don't you and you and. I tried. Thought you had something going last year. Yeah. I know it's a challenge to do. I know how politics work. Yeah. 
and the wheels move slow, don't they? Yeah, they work, and I think you think you got something going. Yeah. And then somebody else gets it. Yeah. What if East Tennessee or West Tennessee comes up? Sure. Pick some, take some money away and use it for something else. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the way it works. That's politics. It is. But you don't get upset. You don't get mad about it. Yeah. Sometimes we do. <laughs> Sometimes we do. Sometimes you got to double down. Yeah. Just come out a little harder next year, right? Yeah. Second time around. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not quite as hard. As That's right. That's right. You've already paved some ground and smoothed it out. Yeah. Makes it easier next time. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. And I, I appreciate uh, her doing the interview and appreciate y'all showing up and time coming okay. out. Okay. All right. You're All welcome, right. Mike. Thank, thank you. you.